Now, if you love God, you'll have plenty of money. And if you love God, you will never be sick. Isn't that what the prosperity gospel says? That's not what Jesus said. That's not what Jesus said. Lazarus must have been living in sin because he was not only poor, but he was sick. The rich man, just like many today, I'm afraid, was surprised that he was in hell. If he had known that he was hell bound while he was living, he would not have wanted to send Lazarus back to warn his brothers. See, his brothers were rich just like himself. And they were thinking that they've got it made, they're experiencing the blessings of God, and we are on our way to heaven. We're Jews. Father Abraham, the rich man said, he was a Jew. And we are rich. We are experiencing God's blessings. We have got a gravy train to heaven. But all of a sudden, the rich man realizes that ain't the way it works. In other words, what he's saying is, please send Lazarus to tell my brothers that being rich won't get you into heaven. Warn them. Warn them. Abraham says they already have the clear teaching of Scripture on this subject. In other words, God has already provided plenty of information and evidence about what's required of them. And God is very clear on the danger of judgment. But see, the problem is the rich man knows that his brothers don't listen to Scripture. The rich man knows that his brothers don't listen to Scripture. It's very clear. The question this morning is, do we? As I'm trying to reconcile my lifestyle with the teaching of Scripture, am I a hearer of the Word or am I a doer of the Word? Number three, the nature of wealth. The nature of wealth. The Old Testament Jews thought that wealth was a sign of the blessing of God. Jesus comes along and Jesus actually warns them about wealth. He warns them about wealth and us. Mark 10, 23, how hard it will be for those who are wealthy to enter the kingdom of God. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Why is it so hard for the rich to go to heaven? Let me offer you a few suggestions this morning. Number one, wealth can be deceptive. Why is it so hard for the rich to go to heaven? Because of the deceitfulness of wealth. You remember when Jesus explained the parable of the sower, the seed that was cast? He said the seed that fell into the thorny ground represents the man who hears the word, but the word of God is choked out in his life. The man who hears the word, he said, and the worry of the world and the what? Deceitfulness of riches, the deceitfulness of wealth, choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Well, how is wealth deceitful? How can wealth be deceptive? Let's look at our scripture this morning. Verse 19. This rich man was joyously living in splendor every day. King James says he fared sumptuously every day. In other words, he was oblivious to everything around him. He was rich. He was happy. He was on his way to heaven or so he thought. You know, it's hard for the rich to go to heaven because their wealth gives them a false sense of security. It gives them a false happiness, a false joy. It's hard to think about eternity when you're living sumptuously, joyously every day. Wealth can be deceptive. Jesus told the parable in Luke chapter 12 when the rich farmer, with his land was very productive. What did he do? He said to himself, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years to come. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. He deceived himself, didn't he? He thought just because God had prospered his farm that he had it made. He could take his ease, eat, drink, and be merry and not worry about the future. Jesus called him a what? You fool. This very night your soul is required of you. He was deceived by wealth. Secondly, wealth can be demanding or be. Wealth can be demanding. Jesus said in Luke 16, 13, no, man, no servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. 
Wealth has a way of becoming our God. We work to have more and more, and the more we get, the less we are satisfied. If you are motivated to achieve wealth simply for the satisfaction of being wealthy, you will never get enough. You'll never get enough. The rich man had more than he needed. There were crumbs falling from his table, yet he refused to share. My question this morning to you is how much is enough? How much is enough? Wealth can be demanding. Thirdly, or C, wealth can be destructive. Listen to Paul to Timothy warning him. He said, but those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a snare and many foolish and harmful desires which plunge men into ruin and destruction. 1 Timothy 6, 9. Ruin and destruction from pursuing wealth? How? Well, think with me just a minute. How many couples do you know who have divorced over money? How many men particularly have destroyed their family, destroyed even their health in the pursuit of money? How many do we know who have destroyed relationships with their children and family members, brothers and sisters over wealth? It can be destructive. Paul goes on to say in verse 10 of 1 Timothy 6, For the love of money is a root of all sorts of evil, and some by longing for it have wandered away from the faith. Wandered away from the faith because of money and pierced themselves with many griefs. Hear the warning of James 5, 5, 1. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries which are coming upon you. Your riches have rotted and your garments have become moth-eaten. You have lived luxuriously on the earth and led a life of wanton pleasure. You have fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter. Your gold and your silver have rusted and your, their rust will be a witness against you. In other words, James says to all of us, particularly the rich, that there will be a day of reckoning. Why can wealth be so destructive? The love of money is the problem. The rich young ruler walked away from Jesus because he was a man who was very wealthy. What did he walk away from? He walked away from Christ. He walked away from the one who had the very words of life. To him, wealth was more important than eternal life. Jesus asked the question, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? And the sad truth is that many people, particularly in America, are giving their soul for wealth. That's how destructive wealth can be. But I want you to know Jesus loves rich people. Did you know that? In Mark 10, 21, when the man walked away, Jesus looked at him and what? Loved him. Loved him. Jesus was not telling this man to sell all his possessions because he hated him. Jesus was not telling this rich young man to sell all his possessions because he wanted him to be miserable. Jesus loved him. Jesus loved him. Jesus loves people who are rich enough to tell them the truth. Notice I said wealth can be deceptive. It can be demanding. It can be destructive. But it does not have to be. It does not have to be. Quickly, the purpose of wealth. God does not give us wealth to do us harm or to cause anxiety. In Matthew 6, Jesus said we should not be worried about wealth. He said, don't be worried about your life as to what you shall eat or what you will drink or for your body is what you will put on. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Don't worry. Don't be anxious. God didn't give us wealth to be anxious about it. The purpose of wealth. Several purposes. First of all, to provide for your family. 2 Timothy 6, 8. If we have food and covering, with these we shall be content. He who does not provide for his family is worse than an unbeliever, Paul says. Paul says in 2 Timothy 6, verse 17, instruct those who are rich in this present world not to be conceited, 